Name that species. Why? Just for the record. She dry. But you don't always need it. So I did a little target walleye right up probably three years ago now called Ned Rig, the best walleye bait no one is throwing. A few years later, it was true then, and I would say it might even be more true now. <laughs> I've vlogged hundreds of fish throwing it, basically bass fishing for walleyes, and nobody is doing it or trying it. And uh, I don't know, it's time for a little video, I suppose, eh? Long story short, I grew up a bass fisherman bass derbies and whatnot, and I used to throw jig worms back in the day. Basically what you kids call Ned Rigs nowadays, right? Small mushroom head jig, a little four inch stick on the back, or maybe a ribbon tail, and it was kind of a guide secret then. It's something that uh, at that time, Dana Fries, the owner of Christofferson's Bait in Alexandria showed me, and guides would go out and chuck it all day because their customers, clients, could catch bass on the weed line, pike, bonus walleyes, a little bit of everything eats it. It's simple to throw, it's cheap, it catches big everything. So jig worm, right? That's essentially what it is. I've been throwing it for over 15 years. The guy who showed me, Dana, was probably throwing it since the 70s. Not to age you or anything, Dana. But it's super simple. It's just a tiny little finesse jig head, mushroom shaped. Uh, this is a finesse half moon jig, VMC and then the regular half moon jig. Eighth ounce, three sixteenths ounce. These are my two go-tos right now, and it kind of depends on what I'm fishing, how I'm fishing, and the types of baits I have on there. Today it's windy as heck. I bumped up to the three sixteenths ounce, and that's when I slide over to the finesse half moon because it's got a little shorter shank hook, so I can upsize that head, have a heavier bait closer to bottom, but still have a short enough hook for these little Ned baits. And now typically four inches is kind of like the dream size for walleyes in anything you're throwing. They just, they eat it day in and day out. If I'm using a smaller, like a three inch turd, uh, whatever you want to put on there, a crop profile, that's when I like going to that finesse half moon with that little shorter hook. Otherwise it's just overkill with that long shank and those short baits. If I'm throwing, say a four inch stick on the back of there, that's when I really like using the regular half moon head little longer shank hook to get that hook a slightly farther back there. It is a little stouter hook too, and when I'm working these things for walleyes, just like bass, I crack them. And if it's a softer, more subtle bite where they're just kind of loading up the rod, the finesse head has got a little thinner wire hook and it's a little better for mushing up and just cranking into them versus cracking them with the stouter hook on the regular half moon jig head. So I think one reason it works so well is because it's finessey, of course, but it can look like anything and everything that they're eating. If I see, like today, half the fish I've caught have been coughing up shiners and perch. The other half have been coughing up orangish, reddish crayfish, and both on the same spots feeding on different things, a tiny little Ned bait can look like whatever you want it to. If I know that they're just keying in on perch and shiners, I go with that little longer profile of four inch, you can see this is like a watermelon red with a pearl belly. A little bit more of a shaddy, perchy pattern. Longer profile. When you slide up into the rocks and gravel, there's some more crayfish. That's when I shorten it up and go with a little stubbier. This is a Z-Man TRD. Uh, I can't remember the name of the color. Green pumpkin, purple. Basically a color that I tie on any lake I go to anywhere. And I especially like using the little bit heavier 316 ounce head with these. A little bit tighter to bottom, and I'm just dragging it along once in a while. I'll give it a little six or 12 inch pop, let it stand up on end, looking more like a crayfish, tighter to bottom. You know, when they do that retreat, they flee, they'll shoot up a little bit and come back down. When I'm using the little bit bigger profiles to look more like bait fish, that's where I get a little bit more fluttery with it. A little bigger hops and bigger sweeps. 
so that it comes up three, four, five feet and then comes down. And for whatever reason, no matter what I'm throwing and where I'm throwing them, it seems like three quarters of my bites are in the first 10 or 15 seconds. So there's something special about that bait first crashing down the bottom and just sitting there for a few seconds before you move it. And then when it makes that first move, they either are already on it or they seem to pick it up. I guess it's kind of one of the main differences of fishing a Ned Rig specifically for walleyes versus fishing one specifically for bass. Folks are typically using the lightest Ned head they can possibly get away with for bass. And I think it was actually originally designed to fish a Ned Rig suspended in the column. If you're in 12 or 16 feet of water, you have your bait in six or eight feet, really light, three thirty seconds of an ounce head or even lighter. And so when I'm using them specifically for walleyes, I just like to be tighter to the bottom, always within about a foot besides those bigger pops. And so that's why I rarely go under an eighth of an ounce. The first couple weeks of the season when they're up high and tight, I'll use that lighter header if it's glass calm. But beyond that, I bump up to a 3 16 a quarter if it's three foot rollers, just so that I know that I'm staying tight to bottom. Another thing that's really cool about them, I said it can look like about any type of you know, prey that they're feeding on. You can fish it anywhere. So I grew up fishing it in that cabbage coontail edge where it's like 12 to 17 foot and you got those big broad cabbage leaves where they meet that snarly curly uh, coontail. So out oh, deeper in the weeds and I know it's an exposed hook, you'd be surprised how well it can come through that. And there's something special about when you do snag a leaf and you rip that bait out of there and then let it crash back down to bottom, you get a ton of bites doing that. But you can also fish it on rock and gravel. And this year I did a lot of playing around with it on super shallow sand for walleyes. And of course you can catch fish on lakes like Mille Lacs, Leech, all over the big walleye factories, Winnie. But I'm talking pressured clear water lakes too. Like around home for me that's Gull Lake, Pelican Lake, Whitefish Chain, North Long. Lakes where we have our local walleye league and if you catch two or three fish all night you're going to cash a paycheck. It's just 20 foot clarity, those fish have seen a lot, and they don't have the numbers of fish in them that say these big waller factories do. And it's unreal that you can go to a lake like that and catch walleyes when people are complaining about using a leech and a slip bobber and not getting bit. And now this spring I was out there pre-fishing for a derby. I was grabbing tons of fish. The side imaging was just loaded up in shallow sand. Sometimes four, six, seven feet, sometimes in 10 to 14 out on the edge of it before it broke off, but they were everywhere. And I was downsizing 16th ounce jig, eighth ounce jig, chucking a shiner, a sucker, a fathead. I tried a jerk bait, I tried a jig and wrap, I tried everything and could not get bit. I'm like, what the heck? Pick up old trusty net head, throw it in there, first cast, boom, big fat under 19 and something that was two pounds, six ounces. I waited because I was trying to do math for the derby coming up. Next cast, miss one. Next cast, boom, another big 19 and three quarter inch under that was 2.6 or 2.8 again. So I'm like, all right, I'm on them. Pick up that jig and a shiner, pitch it in there three times, four times, felt like a hundred, did not get touched. My next cast back in with a Ned rig, just dragging it along bottom on the sand, I stuck a 26 incher and I was like, I gotta get out of here. We got Tuesday night league coming up and then Saturday, the walleye classic. And of course, what do you know, when tourney day comes, they wanted shiners <laughs> when the whole week prior, it was a plastics fight. And the only thing I could think of is those shallow sandfish, I was catching them dragging this thing on bottom, basically never getting it up off bottom. And they would just, you'd be dragging and your tip would mush up and you'd feel maybe a little tick, but normally just mushy. And on that sand, there's nothing up there besides fish. So you set the hook and they're on. And I think those fish were feeding down. You hear about that with crankbaits and spinner bites where they're feeding up or they're feeding down. And none of the fish that I caught that whole week prior to that derby were coughing up any shiners or perch or anything. They had leeches in their mouth and little insect larvae and we had a bug hatch already. And then uh, on derby day, I noticed that every fish Nick Milton wore caught because he whooped my butt was coughing up shiners and perch. He had one that spit up, it did the big head shake right before the net, 12 or 15 tiny shiners spit up out of its mouth. In our live well, we found four or five little four inch, three and a half inch perch coughed up. And so just like that, it switched from a down bite, feeding on bugs and leeches and whatever, bottom popping stuff, 
to bait fish and feeding up and I could not get bit tourney day on it. And by the time I adjusted, I was no help to Nick on that day and we still somehow got a sixth place check with all of his fish. So I got good at netting, but it's unreal how that shallow sand thing, you would never think a Ned rig. You see all these fish up there shallow, white tips spooking off. You know, after you fish them for an hour and you're frustrated and you slide up in five feet to see if they're suckers. And uh, I mean, there's definitely suckers mixed in. You'd see 10, 12 suckers and then five, six walleyes right behind them. Or sometimes it'd be 10, 12 walleyes and then four or five suckers behind them. They're definitely mixed in together, which made it nice for side imaging because to graph those big blobby suckers all over <laughs> almost helped cut down the time for scanning for walleyes. But now we're basically into June and those fish should start transitioning off of that stuff and start heading out to deeper water. On a lake like Mille Lacs, they're gonna be transitioning from that gravel and rock to the sand and then heading out to the mud. Uh, on a lot of local normal lakes for us, they just slide right on that weed line or they stay in the weeds all year. And it's something that very, very few walleye fishermen do is throw a Ned rig in cabbage weeds. And yeah, you gotta catch four or five large mouths, but then your next one all of a sudden is a walleye. And it's, it's shocking how well they eat it. And so when I'm throwing it, 99% of the time, I'm throwing eight pound suffix braid, 832 with a, about an eight foot fluorocarbon leader, typically eight pound, sometimes 10 if I'm really up in some snarly weeds and popping it out of there, but eight is usually good enough. Uh, and that fluorocarbon leader, just because the water clarity is ridiculous nowadays. And of course the abrasion resistance too, like today I'm catching them on rock and boulders. Now you can pick up any old rod that you have laying around in your garage and throw it on there and you'll do just fine. Today I'm using a 7.1 medium Elliott, extra fast. That thing has got some serious power, which is super nice when you hook into that bonus four or five pound smallie. And like I said, I grew up a bass fisherman. So when I get bit on these things, I am absolutely cracking them. Now, if you like to, you know, sort of mush up that tip and confirm there's a fish on there first, the 7.3 medium light fast has just got a little bit softer tip. It'll load up for you so you can kind of confirm what's going on there before you reel into them. That's another awesome option. It just depends on your style of fishing. Are you a fast crack them or is it more of a reel into them mush up type of fisherman? And I gotta say, I've got a couple weeks under my belt of these Fluger President uh, size 30, bigger spool, President XT, and for, I think it's $79. It has got to be the best bang for the buck. It feels like a $150 reel. I wanted to wait and use them for a good chunk of the season before I uh, started blabbing about how much I liked them, but they are super impressive, and I wish I could find more, but they are out of stock everywhere, so I almost even feel bad telling you about them. <laughs> I swear they fish and feel and look like about a $150 reel. I got to find more. So if you got a hookup, let me know where they're in stock. I'm telling you, it's something you have to put in your arsenal for walleye fishing specifically on purpose. And however you ease yourself into it, go for it. If you're on a bite where you're catching a few walleyes with a jig and a shiner, try chucking an Ed rig in there. And you just need that confidence day of just even popping two, three fish to be like, yeah, this is the real deal and actually throw it on purpose. And to be honest, I've thrown it since I was, I don't know, 15 years old. And it wasn't until just three, four years ago that I actually had it tied on my rods during walleye tournaments and picked it up and threw it. And it has put fish in the box that has actually cashed a check for me, which is surprising because I seem to always struggle on game day. You always win pre-fishing, right? But you gotta try it, they munch it. And typically when you do get them on here, they're bigger than average fish. What it do? Five in the morning and I got my mind on loop. I never sleep cause they smoke up in the Bugatti and woke up in the coop. It's a G. 35 gin and juice where I